The procedure is preferably done under general anesthesia, but emergency cases may necessitate local anesthesia only. There are variations on the technique of the procedure, but generally, these are the steps. The patient is put in a supine position, with neck extended. Skin incision, which may be transverse or longitudinal, is given on the neck. Subcutaneous fat and platysma are cut. Strap muscles of the neck are retracted or dissected away. If thyroid gland is encountered, then it is displaced upwards or may be cut. Any blood vessels encountered along the way are ligated. Incision is given on the trachea. A hole is made and the tracheostomy tube is inserted, preferably through the second or third tracheal ring. The skin incision is closed and the tracheostomy tube is secured to the skin via stitches or simply tied around the neck. After tracheostomy is done, Certain precautions and care is required to ensure proper functioning of the tracheostomy tube and to prevent complications. The tracheostomy forces the air to bypass the nasal and oral passages. Hence, the air entering the tracheostomy is not adequately humidified. This dry air leads to increased tracheal irritation and secretion production. Because these secretions may lead to crusting and blockage of the tracheostomy tube, the first point regarding care is adequate suctioning of the secretions through the tracheostomy tube. Secondly, humidification of air. This can be done with humidified air attached to the tube, placing a humidifier or steam near the patient's bed, or applying a wet porous gauze onto the tracheostomy tube, although the latter is considered a crude measure. Thirdly, keep the patient under regular supervision and ensure that the tube is functioning and not dislodged. Since the tracheostomy forces the air to bypass the vocal cords, patients would not be able to speak effectively. In such cases, a notepad and bell should be provided to the patient to allow them to communicate effectively with their healthcare providers. Fourthly, if the patient has a cuffed tracheostomy in place, then the cuff should be deflated periodically to relieve pressure on the trachea. However, this may not be feasible in patients with increased risk of aspiration. In case the tracheostomy tube is damaged, infected, occluded, or non-functioning in any way, then a new tube should be inserted in place of the old one under expert supervision.